the bottom line of resilience is that we know that the young people are going to be okay when the important adults in their lives believe in them without condition. That doesn't mean like, Johnny, it's okay to do drugs. It means, Johnny, I'm not going anywhere. And hold them to high expectations. That's not about grades, trophies, or scores. It's about knowing who they are. The most protective thing in a person's life is knowing who they are. The coronavirus. This is an unsettling time that's gonna leave a generational mark on young people. And we don't yet know what the generational mark is, but I wanna be aspirational about it because I think we can help guide it. And I think we can produce the best generation this country has ever seen. I really believe that. If your parents were from the um, uh, depression era or your grandparents, then you know that they were frugal for their life. If your parents were World War II kids, you know that they believed they could handle anything when the country came together. The question is, what is this generation walking away with? And we better think about how to shape that. In terms of racial justice, this time is an awakening for many. But for many, this is not an awakening. This is like the air they are breathing from the day they've been born. This is just an affirmation of the reality that they've always had. And they're looking around and hoping that the rest of us who are awakening aren't just doing it for three news cycles, that this is a real opportunity for change. So the question we've got is how do we raise a generation of future adults who are gonna build us a better world? Well, you know what? Every emotion that we're having that are particularly heightened now, why? Because of the uncertainty is an opportunity for building resilience, especially in moments of stress like now. Young people build resilience through practice and observation. This means that as parents, taking care of yourself is a strategic act of good parenting because you're showing them how you are being resilient in these times. Modeling how you work through complexity hard questions, things that are challenging the way you think is the way to build thinkers and problem solvers. It's the showing them the process that's gonna build the most wonderful next generation. So let's look at some of these emotions for a moment and just think about them. Good parents feel like they're failing. If you don't feel like you're failing now, you haven't been paying attention. Because you're so used to juggling so many balls, but ever this many balls, ever where you've been in charge of um, your kids' safety, your family's safety, your health, you're worried about neighbors, where you've been in charge of educating your kids and entertaining your kids, disciplining your kids, but in a way that will still allow them to develop, where you've had to work at home at the same time, when have you had so many balls to juggle and you're dropping some of them? Perfection is not an option. And we all feel like we're failing. That's the emotion. What's the resilience opportunity? Self-forgiveness, self-compassion. Let those, some of those balls drop and don't hate yourself when they do. If we can show kids that we can recover, even when times are difficult and we're not living up to our own standards, we are building in them resilience for the future. My kids are frustrated. It's so hard to deal with them. Of course. But this is an opportunity to guide them to build empathy. How? How is the best way to build empathy? The best way to build empathy is to experience other people having empathy over you and what you're living through. Well, it's so easy to be an adult and to look at kids and say, do you have any idea all the things I'm doing? Do you have any idea how hard I am working and all you have to do is stay home in the house and do school and you're complaining? That's not the way to have them build empathy. We have to understand developmentally why this is so hard for kids, right? Kids are designed, particularly adolescents, to stretch their boundaries, to extend their limits, to achieve independence one step at a time. And now we have put restrictions on them to the extent that they feel like captives. It is developmentally against the way they are wired. They are wired also to want to be with their friends, to have social experiences. This is how you guys get grandchildren eventually, right? They're wired for this. So when we tell them not to be with their friends, it's harder than it is when you tell me because their brains are telling them, 
how important it is to be with friends. Their reward centers go off in peer environments.